Hello my friends, welcome back. And today I have another video on the Mars H in 6.5 Creedmoor. And this is the LMT, big boy, large frame gasser. So this is my long range gas gun and it is probably in its final iteration with the exception of a couple of things, but I wanted to talk about the new suppressor I have on it, which is, let's get behind here so you can see it, focus properly. This is the Huxworks Ventum 762. And this is a probably the first user serviceable 762 uh, centerfire rifle suppressor, uh, uh, with the exception of their previous uh, OSS cans. Um, this is what's considered a high flow or a flow through can. Uh, and I wanted to try it out on this gas gun. Previously, I've been running the Surefire SOCOM 762 RC, and I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is so I can save my brass and maybe have some cleaner brass uh, coming out of the, the rifle and maybe have it work a little bit less on the, on the action and everything. So. I've only ever run this rifle suppressed, but I wanted to discuss the mounting, the mounting option. So you've got a hot flow, flow through can, right? With a hub adapter on the end. And this one is uh, rock set it in, so I'm not gonna try to remove it, but this is the Reardon, um, the Reardon Atlas mount and the Reardon muzzle brake. They are, the only ones I could get were in the straw heat treat finish and I don't mind, I don't mind it actually looks kind of cool. Um, but this is what I'm going to be running uh, the next time you see me with it um, on the range. Some other changes I've made to it is to get a little bit more distance um, out of the optic, I changed it out for an Arkin EP5, 5 to 25 by 56. Uh, it's a very inexpensive optic for what it can do, but it gives me all of the features that I want. Uh, and I am not a tactical or a comp competitive shooter. I only shoot out to a thousand yards. Uh, on a flat range, and I don't necessarily need anything better than this. Uh, this is uh, has been very adequate uh, as far as the optical clarity is concerned. Uh, it's a little bit worse at full magnification, but I always crank it back to like 18 power, and that seems to clear things up quite a bit. Uh, the only bad thing about it is you get a little bit of uh, chromatic aberration, so some purple fringing on edges of objects that are backlit. So it's in mills, and so far I've had it out there to a thousand yards, you know, five, six times in total. And I put it on a badge ordnance 1.7 inch uh, mount with the 45 degree offset RMR. And this is just a LARP. <laughs> this is just a, a, a LARP device, is, that's all it is. Um, but yeah, I think the last time you saw it, this had the 13 inch rail or upper on it. And I have since changed it to the 15.3 once they became available. And I am still waiting on the ARCA conversion bottom rail sections from D. Wilson Manufacturing, David Wilson. Uh, they're in the mail and I uh, can't wait to put those on. 
So in the meantime, I'm running the Area 419 Universal Arca, Arca Lock Rail and their Arca Lock Clamp and Atlas PRS or yeah, PRS bipod. Um, again, the trigger is the only other thing that I changed on it. And uh, that is the Geisley SSAE X again. And I've been running the X series of SSAEs um, because I have a coating on the sear and the engagement surfaces, which um, are supposed to be a little bit more durable, especially with a bunch of carbon blowback coming back, coming in because of the suppressed, um, suppressed shooting that I do. But I can't wait to try this out. It has not been shot. Uh, I have taken the end cap off, taken the core out. Um, I'll be able to do that in the future. Um, it was really torqued on there by gorillas. I was not able to get this off very easily. I had to actually put the entire can in my barrel vise uh, in order to, you know, without damaging it. Thankfully, I didn't damage it, but um, the little wrench that they give you to uh, remove this front end cap is completely inadequate, uh, but I was able to get it off with a few blows of a dead, dead blow hammer. Uh, so that may be something that Hux Works may want to um, not tighten it down so much uh, if it's meant to be user serviceable because you're, most people are going to end up damaging the, uh, the body uh, of this can. But I can't wait to see how it operates uh, with reduced back pressure. Uh, this rifle has been extremely well gassed for, you know, in stark contrast with my 308 version of the MWS. Um, that one was an over gassed beast. And, you know, I know why they do it. It's to ensure reliability and combat conditions, you know, with the L129A1 being fielded by uh, British sharpshooters and the MOD. So I can understand why that was overgassed the way it is. Um, and I've had to do a lot of things um, to it to get it toned down a little bit and tune it. This one, straight from the factory with the 20 inch uh, stainless barrel and 6.5 Creedmoor, um, it's perfectly gassed, even with a high back pressure can such as a Surefire um, SOCOM can that I've had on it. Uh, the brass comes out nasty, but it's ejecting perfectly four o'clock every time. Uh, so hopefully this cycles <laughs> with less back pressure. Um, I may have to take the other can as well to the range the next time or We'll see. Uh, actually, I don't think it'll be an issue because these things are fired unsuppressed all the time. Uh, so I'm really not expecting any issues. So yeah, this is what it looks like. And I think the next time I'll put this on video or do a video about it is uh, I'm thinking of Cerakoting this whole thing. Um, so we'll see what I do with that. Until then, Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.